So good evening. We are back to the study of the Spirit's book. Um, last meeting, we started with the law of destruction. We started uh, the, the, the item destructive scourges. We read the first couple of questions um, when we discussed uh, God's purpose in, uh, in these destructive scourges. And, uh, and if God can use other methods, and uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the, you know, the necessity of our evolution to have sometimes these destructions that help us move forward. Um, we have to remember that uh, we are here in, a, in our physical lives uh, for a, you know, it's a short period of time in terms of our eternity as eternal spirits. So uh, everything that happens here happens to our physical body and to a planet that we are temporarily part of. Uh, we stay here on Earth for several incarnations, of course, but uh, eventually we'll move on. And uh, the, even the planet in some billion years is going to disappear, and, uh, the, but we spirits are eternal. So all these destructive scourges are part of the natural law, and sometimes they are need for us to move forward. It uh, helps humankind to, uh, to make an effort to learn more, to evolve uh, both physically morally and intellectually okay so these were the first two questions we are on question 739 now uh, Soraya, you read for us absolutely 739 are destructive plagues physically useful despite the evils prompt by them yes they sometimes change the state of a region but the good that results from them is often enjoyed by f future generations it's an interesting question we are when we are at the end of a pandemic right when uh, we talk about uh, the epidemic that uh, that we are still going through um what do the spirits tell us about and uh, they what they say is that uh, sometimes they change uh what needs to be changed a region and in this case uh, the whole uh, the whole planet, right? So we are learning a lot from this pandemic. Uh, but as the spirit says, the good results are often enjoyed by future generations because all the scientific knowledge acquired through the pandemic that uh, scientists are learning a lot, of course, they are not the answer for those who are you know, struggling and uh, having physical difficulties, losing their physical lives and uh, those that are affected by the loss of loved ones. So it's very important uh, as, a, as a reminder that uh, it's, it's very difficult to analyze a crisis when we are in the middle of it. For us to analyze a crisis, we have to look back or to have the ability to look at it from a bird's eye bird's eye view right um and uh so to to we can look at uh, this pandemic and see some of the benefits and one of them is us being able to do this with uh with you online right we have a lot of, the, the world uh, became more connected in terms of uh, one of the benefits but of course um there is all the negative aspects of it that we are still going through and uh, there is, we will still have for some time. So, um, you know, it's, it's something that we have to analyze for future generations. We will analyze and look back and we'll see the relevance of we having to go through uh, this pandemic uh, when we had to go through. Uh, so they they are as the, the spirits say they are useful because sometimes they are needed, but the results can only be seen by future generations in most cases. Okay. 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 
740. <clears throat> Could such calamities also be a moral trial for human beings, forcing them to suffer the hardest struggles? They are trials that provide them with the opportunity to exercise their intelligence, showing their patience and submission to God's will and displaying their self-sacrifice, this interestness and love for their neighbor if they are not dominated by selfishness. Again, uh, what can we learn, right? Um, instead of ask, like Elmo says, instead of asking why, we should ask what for. So what can we learn here? It's an opportunity for us, humankind, to use our intelligence to learn, uh, to develop scientifically. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to show resignation and acceptance of God's will uh, if we cannot overcome the challenges and an opportunity to show self-sacrifice, disinterestness and love for our neighbors in, in, in terms of helping those in need around us. And we have seen so many examples of people that uh, selfless helped those struggling with the pandemic, right? All those that work in the health community in hospitals, uh, in nursing homes, that uh, displayed many of them self-sacrifice and love for their neighbor. So, you know, it's sometimes we need these events to shake us up, to, to, to make us stop and uh, reflect on what we are doing with our, with our lives, with our evolutionary path. Again, not everybody takes advantage of the opportunity. A lot of, uh, of us uh, still only see the negatives and still struggle with accept any of this. Uh, so, you know, they will eventually will look back and uh, look at the missed opportunities uh, that they had to learn. But uh, in terms of uh, what we should look and, and when such things happen, is the acceptance, the resignation, and the exercise of our intelligence to, uh, to be able to help ourselves and help others, right? Be selfless. That's an opportunity that we are all having with this pandemic, okay? Okay, 741. Sorry. Okay. Do human beings have the power to avert the terrors that now afflict them? Some of them, but not as it's commonly believed. Many of those plagues are the consequences of their lack of foresight. Therefore, as they acquire knowledge and experience, they are able to avert them. They can prevent their occurrence when they have determined their cause. Consequently, among the misfortunes that plague humanity, there are some of a general nature that, impo that are imposed by God's plans and the effect of which is felt more or less by each individual. Human beings can do nothing but accept God's will, yet they often aggravate their own pain and suffering due to their negligence. Destructive calamities with natural causes which are independent of human actions include epidemics, famines, floods, and we weather weather events that destroy the fruits of the earth. Human beings have used science to discover methods for achieving agricultural improvements through crop rotation, irrigation, the study of hygienic conditions, the means of offsetting or at least mitigating many of these disasters. Are many countries today not protected from terrible calamities that once devastated them? Imagine what people could accomplish for their physical well-being when they learn to leverage all the resources of their intelligence and when they add a true sense of charity for the whole human race to their concern and for their own self-preservation. Okay. So, again, what can we learn, right? Some of this, uh, as Kardec, the comment by Kardec here says, some of these calamities have natural causes, right? So we have this uh, weather calamities, right? But uh, how much are we learning 
uh, or are we collaborating to make them worse, right? And we talk about a lot about uh, the climate change and how much uh, we are affecting the, the planet's climate with everything that we have done, especially in the past 50, 80 years. But since the Industrial Revolution, revolution that started at the time of Kardec, um, but again, uh, it's something that we didn't have any concern until probably 50 years ago. And then we started uh, learning and, uh, and working on how to improve, right? Of course, there is still a lot of destruction going on, right? We see all the discussion of the Amazon forest. Uh, we see all the discussion with the... Um, uh, how much we we are polluting and destroying the ozone layer and all these things, but all of these are bringing us more knowledge, more understanding, and more. And with the awareness, uh, we are all studying. Scientists are studying more to learn ways to to prevent or at least um, improve our conditions. Uh, same thing with uh, feminists, right? Uh, we improved a lot since the time of Kardec in terms of agriculture, how to produce more food. Of course, we talked about uh, the problem nowadays is not excess, uh, not lack of, of, of food, is lack of efficient distribution, right? When still have famine in some places in the world, is not because of it's because we cannot make food get to them uh, as it should, right? So all of these, the hygienic conditions that also that we are learning, that we learned since the time of Kardec, we are learning to prevent the contaminations and all these medical advances, right? So this is the basic que the, the question that Kardec asked, asked how do humans uh, have I... the power to avert? Yes, we do have the power to avert and we are doing this uh, all the time. Uh, but it's a balance of on, on one side we are improving, on the other side we are making things worse also in many Good areas. for you today. <laughs> so, um, so we need still to work to improve, to evolve. But again, we have to remember that um, we have to have the ability to look beyond, to look at, at ourselves as eternal spirits. So every struggle that we are going on, it's part of our need for evolvement, moral and intellectual. And, you know, if we, as I always say, if we end up destroying the earth, we destroy the earth, but we will continue. We will have to find another planet. We will have to pay the price for destroying the earth and, um, you know, take better care of our future place, but uh, we cannot destroy it we the immortal the eternal spirit so uh, you know sometimes we you see these catastrophic uh, forecasts of the end of the world we have to try to have a a positive view in terms of we are evolving we are learning we are learning from our mistakes and we are uh, being able to 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 make changes that are improving our living conditions uh, understanding that are uh, amongst us, we are there are many perfect spirits that are still selfish. that want to take care of themselves only, and they are they will make our uh, the lives of others difficult because of their uh, lack of of moral involvement. It's part of the transition from uh, a world of trials and expiations to a world of regeneration that we are going through. Okay. Questions, comments? We finished the subject. Elmo, anything to add here? Yeah, it seems like <clears throat> we always say morally that our problem today is not as much of, no, uh, of knowing, but at to apply what we know, is of doing what we have learned. It seems that the same thing applies to the intellectual side for us as the human race, right? Scientifically, we have so much evidence of all the things that we should be doing, all the things that we should not be doing, 
to protect the environment, to protect the planet, to elevate the quality of the lives of the whole humans as a whole, but we cannot take the steps and do it. Just like our moral difficulty is to start to act, it seems that intellectually as well, we just fail to act on the things that you already know that we should be doing and the things that you should not be doing as well. Yeah, um, the important thing, uh, the, the knowledge has to be transferred from, from the brain to the heart and be applied, right? And uh, we, many of us, uh, even among spiritists, have this, this trouble still, right? The issue of <coughs> putting to practice what we have learned, that we always say in our prayers, right? How to be able to put in practice what we have learned. Okay, so another subject that is very much present in our daily lives nowadays, war, uh, is what we are going to talk a little bit about now. It's only four questions, but uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not the ideal subject to start the world, right? Destruction, war, murder, but, you know, nothing happens by chance. We didn't end up here by chance in this part of the Spirit's book, so we have to believe there is a reason for that. So let's go on. <laughs> war, 742. What drives human beings to war? The overpowering of the animal nature over the spiritual nature and the fulfillment of their passions. In the barbaric state, humans only recognize the rights of the strongest. This makes war their normal condition. As men and women develop, war becomes less frequent because they avoid the causes that lead to it. And when it is inevitable, they wage it in a more humane manner. Okay, so the first thing here, war is not the divine law, right? War is a creation of humankind. Uh, divine law has the, 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 the law of destruction, which is the destruction for renewal. And war is not a destruction for renewal. It's a man-made or human-made uh, invention. How, what are the origins of war? We have to go back to us as primitive beings, right? So our first uh, impulses as in our evolutionary path is to survive. And to survive, we need to eat. And we, we want to eat, we want to procreate, right? basic instincts. Uh, and as we evolve, we, we learn that uh, when we put together a group of people, we have better condition to provide for ourselves, more people to, to hunt, more people to divide the, the food. Now, when this group of people uh, find another group of people that have things that they want, they attack the other group of people to grab the things from, from them, right? That's the basic concept of how war started when we were primitive people, right? And as we evolve, wars have always existed uh, in human history. Not because of a natural law, but because of us as uh, primitive beings carrying with us this um, instinct of destruction to take advantage for ourselves of whatever they had that we don't, whatever we were missing or territory, the, all these things. Um, so it's, it's, the, it's the animal instinct over the moral instinct, spiritual nature, right? And uh, when I talked about animal here, is not uh, by, uh, is not uh, criticizing the animals, but we, in our beginning of our evolutionary path, we had just finished going through the animal phase, right, in our evolutionary path. As a spiritual principle, we, our last 
learning period is it's the animal phase and then we become individual spirits and we have the, have our first incarnations as uh, primitive human beings right so when we start we have basically instinctive uh, very very little free will that we start to develop but as we evolve and learn we develop we have we develop the intelligence um, most of the times faster than the moral side and by developing the intelligence we develop new ways to fight to to use war to our benefit right now the spirits told us here that uh, we would wage war in a more humane manner, right? This is 200 years ago. And after that, you had the First World War, you had the Second World War, horrible wars, uh, and others. We have, humankind that had never not have wars in, in their existence. Even nowadays, right, we have this, this war of... Uh, that Russia and Ukraine, but we have other wars also. Yemen has been in war for, I don't know how long. How long. Uh, but there are people that are waging war in more humane manner, you know, with a more, uh, the, with focusing the destruction on soldiers, on property, and trying to avoid killing civilians which was something that um, we have no, no cares, even in the Second World War, First and Second World War. So nowadays, even in the wars of after the Second World War, in the Korean War, Vietnam War, still the, the, the respect for civilians were not much bigger. Now, there is more concern with civilians in general. Of course, we see barbaric acts and the killing of civilians. But there is already a concern in, in, in having a more humane war, which is you know, difficult to talk about why a humane war, why not having war at all, right? But um, you know, uh, it's still our primitive instinct, our desire, for, in, for instance, in, in, the, in the war that uh, in Russia's invasion of, of Ukraine. The Russians thought it was their right to have their Ukraine's land. That Ukraine is part of Russia. You can argue different things about that, but that's how, why their justification to to invade, right? Um, you know, you 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 start analyzing the reasons for wars, and you end up in the end looking back. You see that uh, it only caused destruction, pain and uh, very little evolvement. There is evolution on wars also, because you learn this, there is scientific evolution, but uh, it would have happened anyway. <clears throat> Sorry, you don't need the wars for that. But the war is a reality. So we have to study it. We have to try to understand the causes and we have to try to learn what are the best ways we can avoid? What can we do individually to avoid? There is always something we can do, right? So <clears throat> the idea is that um, at our present stage of evolution, we know, <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> we, we know that it's going to <clears throat> help me, take over. I don't know who's going to do better now. <laughs> That's why I'm not there. Um, but the bottom line is, as Ron said, war is not part of the of the natural laws. It's a man-made, it's a creation of man, and the cause is very clear, the overpowering of the animal nature of the spiritual nature. Uh, thanks. In the process. In the process of ending the wars, we're gonna go to steps like everything else in nature. Evolution goes step by step. So one of the steps is that the wars will become more humane. It sounds weird.
was a humane word. But if you look at the barbarity of the past and of the way it's made today, at least we have laws, international laws, international rules and regulations of war. Are they followed? That's a different question, but they are there, which is already a step. Eventually they will be followed and eventually they will not be necessary because there will be no war. So we're gonna progress step by step, step by step. But the most important is the only reason that you have wars is because of our still animal nature overpowering our spiritual nature. You are, as we practice war, we are closer to animalia, you are closer to, have the need to be superior to others instead of being closer to our spiritual nature that makes us to seek to be common, to be equal to all. Thanks. Okay, next one. 743, will wars ever end? <laughs> yes, when human beings understand justice, and practice God's law. Only then will all men and women be brothers and sisters. Yeah, so, you know, we, we can see that uh, we are still some, some centuries or decades away from wars ending, right? Because uh, we are still not practicing God's law. We are still not fully understanding justice. Uh, when we all behave like brothers and sisters, then there will be no need for war. But true brothers and sisters, not brothers and sisters like we have many today that are not very friendly with each other. So, you know, it's, it's just a logical answer, right? As, as Earth continues to evolve, we can only uh, forecast that eventually we will no longer have wars, right? When our... Uh, like I almost said, there is still the animal nature over spiritual nature. And if you look at the reason behind war, it's always greed, right? There is always greed. You have, we want to conquer, destroy the others because you think that you are better than others, um, those that you invade. But, uh, you know, in the past, we, we used to, to do wars and slave the, the, war, the, the ones that were conquered. Now we don't slave anymore. We would, you know, the Second World War was a destruction of, uh, of human life uh, because of race, of religion, of, uh, you know, of beliefs. Um, actually, uh, uh, the, the, I was reading the other day, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last, last uh, uh, if it was here in, that I mentioned in, on the, another study, that I was doing some research on, on, um, on war and it was not here on the other study. Uh, according to the statistics, 500 million people died throughout civiliz our civilization of wars. 500 million people. Uh, the vast majority because of religious wars. The Second World War, when people say uh, it was not a religious war, it was, right? The persecution of the Jews. They persecute the Catholic Church. There were many uh, independent Catholic churches in Poland and Germany that the priests were sent to concentration camps because they refused to, to follow the Nazis. So, and this is because so many Jews were killed, the rest is forgotten, right? The homosexuals that were killed during the, the war, uh, the, the gypsies, in uh, Romania and in the rest of Europe, they were persecuted and sent to concentration camps also, just because they were gypsies, right? So, you know, uh, in the end, the Second World War was a, a, a war that is considered a war because of the supremacy of a race, but it has a religious, very strong religious component in it. Um, so we can see by that, when this is going to end, when we treat others like we would like to, them to treat ourselves. We will consider everybody brothers and sisters. We would not want to have, you know, to possess what others possess, their lands, their, their things, when 
you know, when we we are all equal uh, again in terms of rights and uh, and and duties. Uh, of course, we are never going to be equal uh, until we become perfect spirits. But we understand our differences and accept them. Are we far from that? Yes, we are. But we know that we're going to get there. It's just we have just to look back in history and see how much we have evolved, right? Uh, intellectually, much more than morally, yes, but even morally, right? Things that were acceptable at the time of Kardec are not acceptable today. Things that were acceptable 50 years ago are not acceptable today, right? Uh, of course, the politically correct um, um, idea that we have, sometimes it goes to, to, a, to an, a, the other extreme, right? But we move from one extreme to the other to bring it back to the middle, to be, bring it back to the balance. The balance is the objective. And sometimes we need to go a little bit to, to the other side of the, of the balance to, to, to balance both sides and uh, find a, a common way. So yes, wars we went, but uh, we are still far from it, right? Okay. okay. 744. What is God's purpose in making war necessary? Freedom and progress. Hey, if war brings us freedom, why does it often entail a slavery or oppression of the people attacked? This oppression is short lived and serves to make the people grow tired of their enslavement, pushing them to advance more rapidly. Hmm. Yes, um, the question by Kardec is not, you know, the, the God's purpose in making a war necessary. It's, it's kind of a, what's the purpose of war existing? Because God didn't make the war, right, necessary. They made, he made, create the human beings and we made the wars uh, necessary, right? But the, in the end, um, for, you know, there is, like we are studying the law of destruction, right? And destruction brings progress. So war brings progress by horrible means many times, but in the end it brings progress. We learn things from, from war, right? Um, they are not necessary. We can learn through other ways. There are better ways to learn. But, you know, uh, we learn things when we get sick, right? We get sick, we stay in bed for two weeks and we are there struggling and we learn about ourselves, we learn about our limitations, we learn about our um, abilities to deal with the, the difficulties. It's the same thing. So war is not necessary, but we end up learning about it. And, uh, and again, we have to go back in th on thinking of us as eternal spirits. Uh, so, you know, if, even if we lose our life in a war, we lose our physical life we, and uh, it may be necessary for our evolutionary path, right? Uh, again, um, it's difficult to analyze when we are in the middle of it, but we can look at uh, the history of humanity, wars that happened uh, in the past, and we can see um, benefits that came from wars, right? Uh, because of the wars that uh, man made, uh, humankind made some advances. So I uh, ended up freeing some, uh, some people, wars also, right? When you are attacked and you defend yourself, you enter into a war, you, you may end up uh, gaining uh, freedom that you, you didn't have it. So, you know, um, it's diff again, it's almost impossible to look at the benefits when you are in the middle of it. You have to, to look uh, back, okay? But those responsible for wars, that's the last question. What happened to them? Okay, 745. What should we think of those who instigate war for their own profit? Such individuals are severely guilty and suffer many physical lives to atone for all the deaths they caused. They will have to answer for every human being 
who has been killed to satisfy their ambition. So those that are responsible for war are going to be to have a very difficult um, return to the spiritual world because they will eventually when we, they feel guilty it will be very difficult for them until they are feel guilty they are going to have a lot of the victims of the wars persecuting them in the, in the spiritual world you can only imagine um, some of these uh, responsible for this war, these barbarities in the past, right? The difficulty that they went through in the spiritual world. We read uh, cases in the books of Andrea Luiz, of, of, of Emmanuel, of Emmanuel Flamengo de Miranda, about uh, spirits uh, that are the leaders of the lower zones that were responsible for. Uh, destructions here on earth and they were not even uh, responsible for wars right uh, you know we are responsible for our actions the more we know the more responsible we are uh, those that cause war and cause suffering they will have a very serious responsibility again if you those that caused wars 2,000 years ago are less responsible than those that cause war today. We know better. So we should be more responsible nowadays than we were 2,000 years ago. There is a passage um, in one of the books of Brother X of a dream that Kardec had. That Brother X tells that Kardec was taken to the uh, to a place in the spiritual world and he see a lot of suffering spirits uh, in, in horrible conditions and he asks about the spirits if they those were the responsible for for the, the wars and uh, and the persecutions inquisition and then the spirit that is guiding him says no those were already rescued and uh, had gone through the uh, the experiences they had to go through and they didn't know better so they had they had the the assistance that they needed. So and then Kardec asked, so who are these? And uh, and the spirit says, these are the ones that that uh, knew uh, the gospel, knew the teachings of Jesus, and refused to follow it and ignored it. These are the suffering spirits. So again, the more we know, the more responsible we are, and. Uh, one thing that uh, spiritism brings a lot of responsibility of because we know, and uh, it's a lot of people come to spiritism and uh, and then try to to pretend they didn't move away from it because it's it's hard, but uh, the reality is that uh, once we learn, we we cannot unlearn. It's part of uh, our our responsibilities then. So. Uh, we can be sure that uh, these spirits that are responsible for, for those wars, they deserve our prayer and they deserve our, our good thoughts so they can be assisted, even if we have no intention of us assisting them because we are too, still too inferior, imperfect to deal with it directly, but we can ask for them to receive the assistance to not uh, to not go to their level because if we start hating them we go to their level right we are not no different than them it, you know it's just uh, we are going to study murder in the next chapter next item here what happens to the soldiers who have to kill people at wars uh actually it's part of of the next on and the next one that murder but yes i'm going to ask to 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 answer um if they're following orders and they are they are they don't they don't do anything with cruelty they don't have any responsibility of they for it, it like they shot someone and again died. it's a personal thing right if they take pleasure in what they're doing if they volunteer for it, right? You see the responsibility growing, but 
when you are forced to go to war, like the 300,000 that was called by the Russian uh, uh, president, forced to go to war, they have to go there. They have to defend themselves. They are, you know, they are, the other option is to, to escape the country. Could they have done it? I don't know. I don't know the conditions. I'm not, I'm not going to judge. But their responsibility is much more limited than someone that goes to war because they volunteer, go to war, and, and those that kill with cruelty, these are even worse than those that volunteer, right? So again, the, the more you know, the more responsible you are. Depends on how, how you your actions are. Okay, Elmo, anything here now? Uh, doesn't it really have to reinforce that war is not necessary in God's eyes? God has created perfect laws and war is not one of them. On the contrary, war is against the natural laws. But since God will not <clears throat> follow his own laws, prevent us to exercise our free will and we choose war, then God find a ways to make it, get something good out of it, to have something productive out of it. But at the same time, the beginning of this chapter of this topic, we saw that the results, the, the positive that come from it is only seen by future generations. Very often war is the same case. As people are killing one another, senseless, we don't see it. But something good comes out of it. But you won't see that in a very far future, not at that present where things are going on. Thanks, Alan. OK, now we go to another easy subject, murder. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so this first, uh, the question here, uh, Soraida, is, is murder a crime in, in God's eye? I remember Julio saying to us that it should be before a crime before God, right? That in God's eye is not a us usual expression in English. I don't know. Is, uh, is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's right. Is murder a crime before God? Yes. That's correct. Yeah, yeah so I, I believe that would be correct. Well, yeah. before God, right? Yes, yeah. I believe so, yes. Yeah, because the, both the original in French and the translation in Portuguese, it is in God's eyes, but I know that this expression apparently does not exist in English, right? Yeah. Um, I look at the other translation uh, that the, the International Spiritist Council made, and it says in sight of God, in God's sight, which I think is the same thing, right? So, yeah, so we use before God. Okay. 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 746, is murder a crime? In, is murder a crime before God? Yes, and a serious one. When individuals take the life of their fellow human beings, they cut short an atonement or mission that the victim was going through in their present incarnation. And that is an atrocious act. Okay. So murder is a very serious crime according to the natural law because we have no right to take the life of our fellow human beings mm -hmm. uh, according to God's law. So what we are doing when we cut short someone's life is preventing them to fulfill their uh, objective here which is to live a physical life with all the learning that uh, uh, moral and intellectual learning that uh, we have to go through um, so there is no exception in terms of murder being against the natural law now each case is a case that we're going to discuss later but murder is against the natural law, is a crime. Any type type of murder. Um, I know you're going to ask about self-defense to, to 
two questions later, we're going to talk about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is euthanasia in this state? Yes. Euthanasia is murder, right? Uh, if you ask for to be to 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 be killed, right? It's suicide. If you if someone kills you, you know, even if for and again. The, uh, the next question, are all murders equally evil, right? And uh, the answer is God is fair. God judges the intention rather than just the deed. Sorry, sorry that I read, but the, you know, it's important here to bring this into discussion. So when you talk about euthanasia, the person that is the, the doctor, let's say, the doctor is guilty, yes, mm -hmm. but it's not like the same duty as someone that uh, shoots someone in the street to rob, because the doctor believes that they are doing the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. They are not. It is a crime. They are going to be responsible. But the intention also takes, you know, it takes into consideration because what happens is that even if you are going through suffering and you are at the end of your life, those, that final period of life may be what you need to overcome something that you need to overcome in this life and you lose that opportunity, right? So yes, it's a crime. Uh, is abortion a crime? Yes, it's a crime. It's against natural law. Everything that is against natural law. Now, the responsibility is according to your knowledge, right? If you, if, if you didn't, you know, you follow human laws and you didn't believe in the afterlife and uh, you commit the euthanasia, abortion, anything, because you have no understanding of us as eternal spirits. So you are committing a crime, but without really knowing what you are doing. So your responsibility is definitely less than someone that does it knowing what we are doing right the more you know the more responsible you are it's always like that so you judge the crime you know when you when someone that in human law there are two different types of of of, uh, of murder right manslaughter and um what's the other name i forgot uh what's it? homicide and there's a murder there's homicide and there's murder, but that's the one it's manslaughter and the other is battery. Yeah, I don't, it's I don't not, know. I don't know. But anyway, human laws treat it differently, right? If you killed with intention and if you killed by accident, right? It's still a crime according to human laws, but it, the, the judgment is different, right? So if human laws are imperfect, far from perfect, and we already have these on human laws, you can imagine the divine law that is perfect will have a better uh, judgment, which is in the end our own judgment of these events, right? So this is very important for us to put in context everything uh, that we are going to think about when we talk about murder. So the important thing here, it is a crime, it is against the natural law, but every case is a case. The responsibility of those that commit the crime are according to their knowledge. Okay. Elmo, anything to add here? No, not really. I agree. To, it's, the word crime is such a heavy, deep word that has such a, a connotation with our judicial system. And, and it's the right word. But just imagine the word crime here just being some action, some attitude, some behaviors that goes against the natural laws. And the natural laws being the laws that are meant to bring happiness to humankind. So it's an action that goes against bringing happiness to humankind. All right. 7.48, Soraya, we talked about the other one. Yes. Does, does God excuse murder in legitimate cases of self-defense? Only absolute necessity can excuse it. 
if you can only save your own life by taking that of your attacker, you should do it. Okay. Mm. You see here, self-defense, right? If, yes. if the only way to save yourself is by killing someone that is attacking you, mm. the spirit says, it, it's not against natural law. You are self-preservation first, right? We need to save ourselves. Now, how you're going to ju judge it? Your own conscience. You know, if that's the only option you had or if you had a different option. We all, you know, in the end, our conscience is what's going to judge us and what we are going to face. But uh, it's important to understand what, uh, uh, what the Spirit tells us here, that uh, self-defense is a legitimate defense. Uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, the only case of murder that carries no responsibility according to the natural law. It's very interesting here, the very end of it, that the Spirit is telling us that we should do it. That's different than say, it's okay if you do it. It's telling us that you should do it. You should defend yourself. You should seek to live another day in case you are being attacked in a manner that your life is at risk. It's telling us that we should act to preserve our lives. Even if it takes to kill someone not to be killed. But then you remember that in the gospel, there is a passage that says that uh, if, you, if you are killed by saving someone else's life, you are, there, it, there is more merit in uh, uh, before God then, uh, you know, so there are cases that you can uh, die in order to save others. And it is, uh, it has merit before God, right? Yeah, the, the big difference here is what you are eliminate the life of someone who's put the lives at risk. In that case, in the case, I'll sacrifice my life because there is this, school bars going down here when I if I sacrifice my life I can save those kids yes that's a merit okay. it's very interesting um if I might add uh Carol here um one of my martial arts teacher teacher was uh very highly evolved in his black belt and he was able to use any pressure point or power point either to kill or to heal. So of course he taught us both is possible, but you must have great discernment how you use those energies and those tactics. So I thought that was very profound. Yeah, interesting. Thanks, Carol. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and in the end decisions, right, that we make. Yeah. Well, the next one is the one that uh, you asked you asked here. Okay. Which one is that? Seven forty nine. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are people accountable for murderers that commit during times of war? Not when they are forced to fight, but they are still accountable for the cruelties they commit and will be rewarded for their mercy. Yes, uh, we discussed a little bit of that, right? It's exactly what we discussed. Uh, so, you know, depends on, uh, depends on the action and depends if you are forced or not forced. Okay. Okay. Cruelty. No, 750. 750, I'm sorry. Okay. Which is worse in God's eyes, parasite or infantile? They're equally horrific, horrific, because any crime is a crime. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's an interesting question. I don't know, how, well, uh, if you're killing your parents or killing your children, and killing your children mean in any way, right? Um, any crime is a crime. The, the answer is very direct. They are equally horrific, so there is no difference. Again, the intention, there is difference, but the crime is a crime, so. 
the, dif the, the difference will be the, in the intention. Yeah. Okay. 751. How can infant side exist in intellectually advanced nations and even be allowed by their laws? Intel intellectual development is not always accompanied by moral integrity. A superior spirit may advance in intelligence and remain wicked. This is what happens when a spirit lives for a long time without improving. Yeah, uh, here, uh, when Kardec is asking about infanticide, he was not talking only about abortion, right? There were civilizations that killed their children that were uh, defective, or they were, you know, some, uh, you, you, you look at China, right? That has the one, well, now they changed, but they had the one uh, child um, law and many, Parents would kill their children, the girls, the girls that were born, right? That's why they you have more men than women in China today. Um, and uh, and abortion is legal in most countries, advanced countries in the world, right? Um, so how is it allowed by laws? Again, our evolution goes to a certain point. We we have. Uh, uh, still have not decided, we as a society have not decided when, um, when uh, a fetus is, a, is a, an individual, right? Uh, in spiritism, we know that it's at the time of conception, the spirit connects there, but I'm talking outside spiritism, right? And many of these um, lawmakers, they, consider just the physical life and the rights of uh, the woman over her physical body. Again, it's a long discussion. It's not a discussion that we, we can have. And there is a lot of um, back and forth here. Uh, what we, we need to understand is all what we see here is that all um, killing of humans from the moment of conception to the end of life, it's, it goes against the natural law. It goes against God's law. Now, each case is a case and there is a lot of, you know, um, things in between, right? So, you know, we were not going to say that someone that committed an abortion, that had an abortion without having any knowledge or having any understanding or having uh, any or because of feelings you know that uh, were overwhelming that they are going to be as much responsible as someone that does it by already knowing what they are doing um it's a it's human's law it's allowed in this country and we have to understand and accept and i always you know when when this comes uh, very strong in terms of it brings the political party into it. I always say, well, one side is against abortion, but in, in favor of, uh, of the uh, death penalty, right? And the other side that defends abortion is against death penalty. So according to spiritism, both are wrong. So, you know, but again, we live in a society and we have to uh, be able to live in society and understand and accept uh, the decisions without approving, right? We don't need to approve, but we have to accept what society, uh, in, in, in the society we live. Uh, we, as Jesus said, we condemn the sin, we do not condemn the sinner. We are never going to condemn those that commit the crimes, we condemn the crimes and that's very important very difficult we always we are very quick to condemn people and we should not we should condemn the crime fight against the crime not against those that commit the crime uh, again society has its flaws those that are danger to society have to be uh removed from society for the safety of themselves and of society but again with an opportunity of rehabilitation we are far from it right 
So we went a little bit over, but it was important to finish here this chapter. Not that it gets better, because then next week we start with cruelty, right? But <laughs> it's law of destruction. We're getting there. We'll finish soon. Okay, any final thoughts, questions? Okay, so before we do our final prayer, uh, this Saturday, we have our good friend, Edward Christie um, from the Inner Enlightenment that he used to be part of our study groups on Sunday, right? And he's going to, to talk at Saturday, 11 a.m. Blessed are the peacemakers. So he's saying that one of the central teachings of Jesus is that we love each other and God above all. How can we strengthen our will to do this? Uh, in his eight Beatitudes, Jesus gives us a picture of man's spiritual life, the attitudes and actions of the, those who follow him. You are invited to spend time with us to reflect on one of these. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. So this is Saturday at 11 a.m. through the U.S. United States Spiritist Federation Facebook and uh, United States Spiritist Federation YouTube channel and the TBC, the International Spiritist Council uh, YouTube channel. Book Club comes back next Wednesday. We restart with the book Hail Christ by Emmanuel. So this is Wednesday at 7 p.m. online only. Right, Danny? Thank you. And uh, we reopen also on Monday, our regular Monday meetings, uh, this, this coming Monday, okay? Carol, can you do our final prayer now? Sure. Thank you, John. Thank you, Elmo. Thank you, Sarita, for reading. And thank you, everyone, for participating and being together in a new beginning of a new year. Infinite creator and supreme intelligence, we are grateful to be together this evening for our study of the Spirit's book involving the law of destruction and the destructive scourges. We know that epidemics, famines, floods, weather events, plagues can have natural causes. And we are learning from destruction. We are learning new ways to improve our conditions and to prevent or avert disasters. We need to balance our conditions through the intellect and through moral applications. And may we remind ourselves, may the brain and our hearts be in alignment. War is human, it's man-made, based on survival, involving our animal instincts with little free will. It is not part of God's law or the natural law. However, we do have international laws which may help to avert wars, may help us to somehow relate to wars in a more humane way. There is progress through, through the application of the golden rule. Wars will end eventually. As far as murder is concerned, it is a serious crime which can cut short an atonement or a mission. So therefore it should be not done. We give thanks to our spiritual benefactors, the good spirits, the helpers, the healers, the teachers, our guides who are bringing forth this study, this wisdom for us. And may we be alert to how we can progress each and every day. We give thanks for the inspiration that we have received this evening. And may we receive this blessing through the love, light, and peace of Christ as well. May our minds be sharpened. May our hearts be more loving and open and more kind. And may we do our best each day to provide a humanity on the good side of life to inspire others, our family members, loved ones, coworkers as well. We pray for suffering spirits in the physical world as well as the spiritual world. And may all of our spiritus centers throughout the world be blessed and guided, especially in this new year. We pray for peace and we pray that we can be better stewards of the earth as well. May we be balanced in our 
efforts are endeavoring, and may we continue to go forth each day with a positive, uplifted attitude in life, bringing forth this light to others as it is so needed. We humbly ask now for safety and protection as we go forth to family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers. And may we be blessed as we go forth. May we do good and may we, we share these blessings through our charitable activities, our love, and our intent. So be it. So Happy New Year. Blessings.